Who here likes traffic? <laughs> Absurd question, I know. So there was a period of my life um, where I used to go from my home in Motijil to my university in Boshundhara to uh, Uttara, where I used to have a part-time job, and then back home to Motijil. And it wasn't really a long journey, it, as in the sense that it wasn't really a large journey. It was 40 kilometers, but it used to suck six hours of my life every day. And I'm sure a lot of people over here can relate. Um, Dhaka is not a really a big city, but it has 20 million people. It's the densest city in the world. And what makes it what it is, is uh, that there is a very real lack of public transportation. There is only about 5,000 buses over here. That's for a city of 20 million people. And that is not a lot of buses, which is why when you, when you go get on a bus, they kind of look like this. So afterwards, right, you have, uh, wh what else do you have? You have about, what, 400,000 rickshaws, you have about 50,000 CNGs, and that is really not enough. So right out of school, I thought to myself, you know, what can I do to solve this? And there wasn't really much that I could do. I didn't have a lot of resources, but I had a few friends who were also passionate about solving a real problem. So we got a few bikes and we started, you know, we had a secret Facebook group where we said that, hey, if you want a ride, just post on the Facebook group, and I shared my number, and people used to call my number to get a ride, and that's how it all started. So the hypothesis was that, you know, traveling in Dhaka is so bad, people are going to start using motorbikes, even though there was no motorbike culture in Bangladesh. This was all last year, uh, almost to the day. We launched our app in November, and that's when we started tracking users, we started tracking drivers, uh, we started tracking where they are, uh, where there is a request coming from, where they're going, how long did that take. After about a year of this, we started seeing patterns emerge. And those patterns were very interesting. But coming to that shortly, so the hypothesis was that there was a need for this. Now, was there really a need? That's by number of months that we operated in, and that's by every time someone reached out for us. Every time there were someone who was reaching out to take a ride through us. And this happened over the last 12 months. It's happened five million times. Five million times when people <laughs> thought of moving, they thought of us. So there was that. Now, you know, during this journey, uh, we came up with a few terms of our own, right? We came up with one term that I'm pretty excited about. It was called speed of life, right? What is the speed of life? Anyone? So uh, the speed of life is what we'd say is how long it takes for a person to move around the city, right? The faster you move around, the more time you have to spend with you know, being productive, spending more time with your friends and family, and just living your life. Recently, there was, a, very recently, like, I think it was last month, a World Bank survey came out, and it said that the speed of life in Dhaka, the average speed of Dhaka is seven kilometers, which is like barely above the walking speed. It's just slightly, just a little bit. Um, yeah, and we had about 3.2 million working hours lost. Uh, that's three point every day. Is it every day? It's every day. 3.2 million hours that a person has lost that could have been spent with their friends and family with and with their loved ones, right? So what we started doing was, I mentioned, right? We track people's start and end and their speed and how long it takes, right? So we started saying that how fast is a motorbike transportation among, uh, in Dhaka. So this is a graph by weeks on that end, and that's the median speed. The median speed is above 16 kilometers. That's more than twice what the average speed was, right? 
Um, obviously, you know, in Fridays and Saturdays, because it's a holiday and there isn't much traffic, people move around a little bit faster. But otherwise, it's still pretty consistently around 16 with very little variations. And we can go even deeper than that, right? We can calculate the speed by what time people left. So, I know it's a little complex, but I broke it down by day, and then I broke it down by at which hour was that request coming in. So 6 is 6 a.m. And as you can see, at 6 a.m., people move around a little bit faster, obviously, right? And at 11 o'clock, again, people move around a little faster, but then it depresses a little, right? What we're doing over here is we started accelerating people's speed of life. That's more time that you have. This graph over here, right, this is my favorite one. Uh, I call this the heartbeat of Dhaka, right? It shows you by hour which, where people are reaching out from. So it's Dhaka, at 6 o'clock, it starts coming alive right before it doesn't. And you can see the peak over there. That's when people are reaching, going to their homes, going to their offices, sorry. And it kind of depresses in the middle, but as soon as the office time ends, again, it starts going up, right? This is pretty consistent in what we would expect. Uh, so now that we have this data, what can we do with it, right? Uh, there is a lot to do. We know where people where at those points, I can actually pretty confidently say that if you leave from this place at this time of the day, how long will it take you to reach your destination, right? So that's just one layer. That's just how we start. Uh, there is a lot to do over here. The, the, uh, because of where we are seeing that, hey, this is where you live and where you work, um, this could be used to plan your day on an individual level or this could be used to plan the city on a government level, right? These are data that we did not have before, right? This could be used a lot more. Um, so this is one part of that story, right? This is what we are trying to do when we started. We, we started with the hope that maybe we can help uh, Dhaka's infrastructure in some way. Maybe we could crowdsource public transportation. Right, uh, but and we did, but that was just one part of the story. The other part of the story is what we do not really hear a lot about. Right, the other part of the story is when you have uh, the riders. There are service provide service availers such as ourselves, and then there are service providers who are the riders themselves who are providing this service. Um, at first, because Bangladesh did not have a motorbike taxi culture, right, although it's pretty common in Indonesia, in Thailand, in Vietnam, Bangladesh didn't have it, right? So when we asked for people to come in into the system, uh, at first the only people who came in who were people who were passionate about helping others. People who thought that, hey, I have a motorbike, I'm going, uh, my, going to my home or to my office, maybe I'll share my ride with someone, maybe I'll help someone on the way. But more and more, what we see is people turning their passion into profession, right? Uh, and, when, and we see some gir curves like this. We measure people's earnings over here. So obviously in January, February, that's when we just launched, earnings of a rider was much lower. Now they're earning, if they're performing well, they're earning about 34,000 taka, right? And that is a good middle income salary. That is a good middle income earning that they're making, right? And even people who are just still, you know, helping others, they're still earning like 4,000 taka per month. It's, and, you know, this is something that we didn't think that would happen, right? And this was earlier this year when we just started, right? And we were having a lot of good customer feedback. Um, and, you know, we used to talk to a lot of riders as well uh, to see what they were thinking and how can we uh, help them in any way. So, and a lot of them had a lot of complaints, right? Uh, but this particular guy that I talked with, he said he was actually pretty grateful. He was like, hey, 
I lost my job and I have a family, I have a daughter who goes to school. Um, I don't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. And when I heard about this, that hey, this is a way that I can earn some money, I have a bike, uh, let me just come in and register and see where this goes. And that month he worked, what, 12 hours a day, 14 hours a day, and he earned 48,000 taka a month. And he was, and, and then he said, he didn't know who I was, right? He was just saying it. He was just saying that, look, because of this, because of passengers like you, uh, we, are, we have a new source of earning, which we didn't. And uh, because of you, my daughter can still go to school. And that was the day that I thought, okay, you know what? We didn't start. We didn't start to make these stories. We didn't start with these stories in our head. We just started to solve a problem for ourselves, a problem for myself, right? My, my journey from Motijil to Uttara, which used to take two hours, by the way, now it's like 40 minutes, 50 minutes. Um, that was the story we wanted to create, but there were these other stories that we ended up creating. And yeah, and this is how we're moving Bangladesh in more ways than one. Thank you.